So what I would like to do in this uh, video is to demonstrate some of the features that we have added to the data hub to basically help the construction and validation of uh, policy power tools more than anything else. Uh, I'm not going to demonstrate the integration of the data hub with Hedge and then your IMQTT brokers and these kind of things. I will just focus on the user interface and show you some of these uh, power tools. Uh, the way to do it, I will basically recreate from scratch one of the policies that you can find, one of the examples you can find in the IBMQ policy cookbooks uh, that show how uh, you can use published quota uh, model uh, for building a behavior policy that will start counting and reacting to the number of messages that has been published. So uh, this policy is quite interesting because it has quite a few branching in terms of the transition and pipelines, but also they tend to be a little bit repetitive uh, and that's one of the features I want to look at. So let's get started, going to the data hub, no policy created, so I just start by going to create a new policy. And here you are facing a blank canvas where as a first starting point, you are expected to open the toolbox that is on the top left of your canvas and start creating element of your policy by dragging blocks from the toolbox uh, to the canvas. So my aim at this stage is to create a behavior policy. So I'm getting that node, dragging it and dropping it on the canvas. And as you can see, you've got a first element. I can, of course, scroll it a bit, zoom in, zoom out. But every element of your policy will be like this, uh, a node with a handle, uh, or many handles at different sides, some handles indicating the input and some of them indicating the output uh, out of that. When you double click on the node, you have access to a configuration panel. And that's what I'm going to use to start configuring uh, and creating my behavior. So I'm creating a node, uh, all the editing, as you can see, I'm copying and pasting from the source. Uh, my behavior model is a quota. When I select quota, there's a few more configurations that I need to deal with. Minimum publish zero, that's fine. Maximum publish 10. And this is now uh, created. So I've got the first part of my behavior policy. Uh, you might know or you will discover when you try building it that policy requires starting, a starting point, which is basically uh, some client uh, filters. So again, I go back to the toolbox, find that node, drag it on the canvas, uh, do a little bit of scrolling to put it where I want, and then connect it to my behavior policy, I will edit, and here my filters, I will use a regex and say I want every single uh, filters, every single messages, and that's about it. I've got the first two elements of my behavior policy. At that stage, what you start building out of the policy body itself are the different transitions based on the model. So here, what I could do, of course, go to the toolbox, find the transition element, uh, drop it and start creating. But what I want to show is uh, instead of a top-down approach of creating the policy is what we call a bottom-up, meaning you can create the next element in a chain in your policy by literally starting from the one of the handle on your node and clicking on it and then dragging. As you can see, you can you have an icon that is exactly the same as the transition. Basically, what I'm doing here is preempting the creation of a transition node immediately connected to the behavior policy. And when I release, drop the case, you can see that the transition element is immediately connected. Uh, I'm deleting that one, I don't need it. Uh, again, I'm double clicking on it. You can see the model that is being used, that's for information purpose. What I'm expected to do here is based on the published quota model, I need to find the transition 
and uh, states from two that I want to start working. So the first one is the initial to connected uh, in band connect. So I will select this one and that's about it. What I'm doing now is out of the transition, I want to create my pipeline. So again, starting from the handle, dragging, you can see the icon is default because this time I'm creating an operation, selecting it, double clicking, uh, I'm copying the, uh, the name of the function because what I'm creating here is a system log. The system log is basically a debug. And here I'm going to do something nasty, copying the whole string out of the document. Uh, I'm pausing here just for a second to describe what you can see. It's a message. It's basically any type of text that you want to type but it has some interpolation. You can use various, some variables to basically be matched to aspect of your message or transition or whatever. And the variables are indicated by that uh, syntax, a dollar and a curly bracket with the name. That is perfectly fine to type them all the way. But what you also have is when you type it along directly, then you can use a shortcut. As soon as you type uh, the dollar, you have a pop down that lists all the available function. If I start typing timestamp, timestamp is selected. There's only one option. I can click and type enter and that's it. You can see that the rendering is slightly default because this time this one instead of being a string like that that can be edited and made typo, you have something that is basically a blob and you cannot change it and it's all the fact that it's a time stop. So this one I will replace. That was my uh, client ID. Uh, and I will stop there at that stage. I've got my first message. I click on subscribe. Uh, if I open it again, you will see that the message has been converted. All the dollar curly are replaced by the blobs. And that is pretty good. Uh, this is the first step of my, uh, of my uh, transition. Uh, on the map, on the cookbook, I've got another one. So again, dragging from there, operation. This is again a different uh, a system log, but this time it's a different one uh, because I want it to be just an info, change the name and the message. Uh, just copying again, no fuss about that. And I've got my first message uh, to hit. And this is it. I've got my basically first pipeline of my behavior policy starting from the transition. I now have to build an extra free other pipeline uh, to deal with the different state and transition. This is a very repetitive task. I will have to do exactly what I've done. What you have at your disposal now is the ability to literally copy and paste elements of your policy into the canvas to help for with the repetitive behavior. And this is exactly what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going, I'm pressing shift and drag to basically select all the three elements from my first pipeline. Then I'm copying copy command C and then pasting command V. And you can see immediately that I've got a duplication, a duplication of the three elements selected and ready to be moved uh, uh, around. It's not just the elements that are copied, it's also their configuration. And that's very important. If I double click on the first one, you will immediately see that there is a problem model is required. What you need to do, of course, which is a bit that is not duplicated, you need to connect your nodes. Uh, of course, all the duplicated nodes that were connected remain connected, but that connection needs to be done. Here it is. Now I can access uh, and I know that my second uh, 
pipeline con is connected to publish. So I will change that one. This is it. And that's almost it. The, sub the first operation is done. I don't have to use it. Uh, and I will go straight to the second one uh, to basically change. It's still in four. I will keep the name. What change is the message that basically indicates that a first publish has been counted. And that's it. My second branch is there. As you might guess from the little widget at the bottom of the screen, the three elements, the three nodes that I copied are still in memory, which means immediately I can pass again the same three nodes to uh, literally add my first branch. So again, I need to link it so that my model is connected. Uh, I'm looking now for the inbound publish, which is published to publish. This is this one. Uh, the log remains the same again, the first one. Then the last one is changing. It's still an info, uh, but I'm changing the message. One more message was counted, and that's about it. I've got my third pipeline created, and then again, uh, I'm basically copy pasting the node I copied, my three nodes connected there, and then I change to create the final uh, transition, which is uh, inbound publish, but this time from publishing to violate it when uh, more publishes and the maximum allowed, uh, allowed is reached. I get that. The first system log remains the same. The second system log is changing now. Uh, it has a different setting, so I'm replicating. Uh, it is a warning, and the message is also changing. So I'm copying, pasting, uh, and here we are. Uh, and there's now a third element in the pipeline, which is basically uh, a disconnect function. So I put the name, select the disconnect, which will be a terminal function. When I click here, you can see that there is no more handle at the end of that node, I cannot add any more operation or any other element out of that. And at that stage, this is it. I've replicated uh, the policy as it was, what I can do, I can check my policy, uh, run through the validation, making sure that every element is uh, correct, properly connected and configured. And when it's the case, I can then click on publish and I get a prompt that says that it's been published. When you go back to Data Hub, you will now see your policy being stored uh, in the list of policy and basically starting to intercept messages. What you do with it is for a different video. Hope you enjoy it. Bye.